Um, hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be looking at circular measure IGCC ADMAT 0606 and um, I'm going to make this video really quick because this is my third time recording. Apparently I'm having some issues with my microphone. So let's get started. So now being an ADMAT student, you should know that degrees are not the only way in which you can measure angles. You can also use radian measure. So with that, we can say that th with that, uh, we know that 360 is 2 pi, 180 is pi, 90 is pi by 2, 45 degrees will be what, pi by 4, then 720 degrees will be what, 4 pi. Now, of course, I can just do easy times 2 divided by 2 and get those values. But what if I have something like 10 degrees? Or what if I want to know what pi by 5.3 is in degrees? How will I know that? So you can basically convert from degrees to radians and from radians to degrees using the form following formula. When you want to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 80. And when you want to convert from radians to degrees, you multiply by uh, 180 over pi. As you can see, they are reciprocals of each other, not negative reciprocals, just reciprocals. I don't like the color. Let's change the font. Let's go with black. Then. So let's say I have 10 degrees. I want to convert it to radians. So I'll multiply it by pi over 180. That's what that becomes 10 pi over 180. That means it's 1 over 18 pi or pi over 18. Let's check 10 times pi over 180 on my calculator gives me 1 over 18 pi. Correct, right? Then what if I have pi by 7 i'll multiply it by 180 over pi so pi, this this cancels 180 over 7 is good 180 over 7 gives me yeah, just 180 over 7. now i'll check this on my calculator i'll do pi by 7 times 180 by pi oops let me do that again on my calculator pi by 7 times 180 over pi Yes, it gives me 180 over 7. Now, sometimes it can be quite difficult to remember. So I'll give you a way in which I remember it. So let's say I have 10 degrees, right? Now I know that radian measure has pi in it. So when I'm multiplying, I'll keep my pi on top and I'll divide by 180. Now the same way for radian to degrees. I have three radians. I know that I don't have pi in it. So when I divide something by pi, the pi pi will cancel. So I will do what? 180 divided by pi. Pi and pi cancel, then you can multiply. Then you need to know the length of an arc. So from A to B is what we call the length of an arc. And in order to get the length of an arc, what you have to do is your radius times your angle. Now remember that this angle will always be in radian measure because in fact, let me give you an example to explain it. Let's say my radius here is 5 centimeters. My angle here is 72 degrees. Okay. So I, I said arc length is what basically 5 times the angle 72. What do I get? 5 times 72. I think it's 360 or so. Yeah. 360 centimeters. Now, any guy with common sense can, of course, tell me that this distance cannot be. 360 centimeters well from here and here is five centimeters that will help you remember that the angle will always be in radian measure and not degrees so even if you get in degrees use this to convert it to radians and then multiply then we have area of a sector now this whole thing is a sector right and you don't need to use the arc length in this one. You just need to know your radius and your angle. Okay. So when I'm calculating the area, I'll do what? Half times my radius squared because it's radius here and radius here, this length. So radius squared times the angle here. Now this C tells me that the angle is in radians and not degrees. Okay. Then the last thing, area of a triangle. Now, of course, when I ask you, was the area of a triangle? You told me half times base time height. That's because you haven't given the height in that one. What if the height is not given? How will you calculate the area? 
well we have a backup formula for that okay so half times a b times sine c what this basically means is that if you're given two angles a uh, two sides and the angle between them you can easily find the area so let's say half times my angles multiply that so ac times sine of this angle so sine b i can do that for the other angles as well let's say i want to i've been given b and c half times b c times sine a you see you can easily find it here see and the same thing if i'm giving a and b and angle c half times a b times sine c now you use this formula when the height is not given but if the height is given it's right angle triangle uh or even like this you can do half base times height and easily get the area so now this was the theory part of circular measure i didn't um solve any questions in this because the questions will be coming in the next video because i didn't want to stress you too much with the questions right now so go through the theory and then if you have any questions put them in the chat below I'll be posting the ones in which I solve the questions as well very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and all the best for your IGs.